Hey guys, Alex Williamson here talking about the history in your aquarium. Today we're talking about the geology in your aquarium. Now, pretend this isn't a centerpiece off of my uh, table from my wedding. And we're gonna look at this and I can tell you a little bit about every kind of rock if that could go into your fish tank by looking at this. So, up top, pretend we've got the lands. Pretend those uh, succulents are a forest. Pretend those uh, pieces of uh, siltstone are a uh, siltstone and schist it looks like are mountain ranges and that all of that is under here and that there's hot lava at the bottom by my hands and that these and the, the water table and these big rocks that's aquifers and uh, you know the, the the ground rock and everything and then the bedrock below that is is this rock here that I'm pointing to so when you've got that you've got rock that's made in a volcano now that rock is heated so hot that it will turn into a liquid and then re-solidify. This causes crystals to form. This rock is known as igneous rock. And it's important to know this stuff with your aquarium because when a rock has those little crystals in it like that, then you know that it's probably gonna be safe for your aquarium. Uh, here's a picture or a piece of jade from the Northwest. Now this is actually an igneous rock, but it's also a metamorphic rock. So an um, igneous rock can be a metamorphic rock if it has been formed and then it's combined with another rock in a layer and then put under intense heat and pressure over millions of years, sometimes billions of years. So in this jar here, stay with me, you can see that there's sediment building up at the bottom there. The next type of rock we're gonna talk about is sedimentary rock. And there's just the pressure from this jar and the time of having plants in here for two years and these little bits and pieces and pollen it all builds up and that compresses down into a layer and this would be called a conglomerate rock if you gave it enough time and enough pressure. And this is not a good rock for your fish tank. This is called a uh, sedimentary rock and sedimentary stones, some you might know, uh, limestone, uh, sandstone, siltstone, mudstone, uh, anything that carries a fossil is probably going to be a sedimentary rock because you know it was laid down and you know it held the imprint of of whatever was there uh, this is a piece of sandstone from the chuckanut range which is here in the northwest this would be a bad thing to put in the tank now let me talk to you about why uh why it's a bad thing to put uh, conglomerate stones or metamorphic stones uh, that come from sedimentary stones in your tank. So even though we've got fossils on this side, this side here has been pressed along a fault line of granite or some other hard rock. And because of that, we're getting formations from the living organisms that were in there. And here you can actually see it's shiny on my finger. Uh, it is actually graphite, which is carbon. Uh, so you've basically got carbon or charcoal from the fossils in there. You've got iron and sulfur hanging out here. And you can tell that by the reddish, uh, brownish oxidation in any rock. It's usually a good indicator that it's, that it's iron or could be trace amounts of gold, but don't go hoping. Um, so you can see this leaf here. This leaf I happen to know is 60 million years old. This rock is 60 million years old and it is full of holes. If I hit it on the ground here, let's, let's do this cover my eyes for a moment hold on guys all right so when I do that it cracks the stone now along these cracks algae and other life forms get in there and it it's lines of deposit that are that are causing those cracks so say there was a lake there for for a hundred thousand years it was put down animals lived and died, leaves were there, and then something dried out. Here you can see a fern, and these are the very critters that in, are in your tank, quite possibly. They're aquatic plants, uh, and and they were either covered in a, just in the water naturally as they died, or they were covered by a landslide or something catastrophic like that. Now, one of the, the kinds of sedimentary rock that you can use that actually the sedimentary and igneous rock can become metamorphic rock, metamorphic is what it sounds like it has been turned into another type of rock and it can be a lot of different varieties but here I've got 
some chert and some jasper mixed in in these little pebbles and these uh, are all if it's shiny and it feels like plastic and it doesn't absorb water at all uh, and it, you know you can dry it off real quick feels almost like a glass it's a good indication that it is either an igneous or a metamorphic rock and it will probably be okay in your tank now fish don't like things like iron and titanium and copper in the water in high amounts. You can see that on this sandstone here uh, and limestone that makes up a rockery here in Seattle in the northwest of Washington State, um, there's algae and moss growing right on the rock. So right there, that tells you that it's porous enough that something has taken a hold. Life is taking hold all over in it. And you may think that's good for your aquarium, but you can't control the the teeny tiny organisms, the protist uh, organisms and the, uh, the algae, the lichen, the plants. You just don't know what's on there. There's lots of uh, single cell organisms and things that are just as happy underwater as they are on land and you don't want them in your tank. So if you're gonna use them, Take those stones, put them in a bucket, wait a month if you can, and sample the water and see what the pH is doing. If the pH looks okay, if the water looks clean, if there's no sediment, it's probably going to be okay in your tank, but you, it's best to know what you're working with. Now here is diorite. This is an igneous rock. This was formed in a volcano. The volcano heated up and the rock became liquid. And it was made of various different other types of rock that were already there, and so it formed into black and white speckled rocks. Now this usually doesn't have as many heavy metals, although cracks can form and things like gold and lead can also be stored in those rocks. So just something to keep an eye out for. I bet you'd be happy to find gold rather than upset that you can't put the gold in your fish tank. Although you could put gold in your fish tank, but it's just you don't want the stone that has has something harmful like lead or copper in it in your fish tank. Red is an indication of, of iron, red and brown a lot of times, and green is a good indication of copper. That's not a universal case because under different amounts of pressure, different things happen. Now just looking here at a handful of stones, we've got another granite related stone like the diorite, and we've got, uh, we've got some uh, stone here that is a actual crystalline stone. This is a quartz stone. Qu quartz is great. Granite is great. Uh, serpentine. This is a transformed jade and serpentine rock. So this was that metamorphic stuff I was talking about. Now it does have copper in it. It does have iron in it. But it has been compressed so hard that it's going to be okay in your tank unless you have the most sensitive fish. So unless you're breeding something really sensitive, don't sweat certain rocks like that. But as I've said in my other videos, always take your rocks, scrub them really well, put them in boiling water if you can, if they're not porous. You don't want to put them in boiling water if it's like lava rock, which is an igneous rock, but it's if it's a light rock, you want to be careful because there's a chance that there's already bacteria colonizing, already algae colonizing. You can see on these rocks, on these uh, sedimentary rocks, that they wouldn't be good for a tank. They've already got one, two, three, four. You can see the yellow, you can see the moss, you can see the splotchy green and the gray, the white and the orange uh, algae and lichen growing on it. So it's already been colonized. There's black bacteria right there. There's fungus going on down here. So not good for your tank. And this is why it can hurt your fish. It can introduce fungus and other things that uh, are no good for your fish. Now, it could also introduce things that are great for your fish, but why risk it? So, just think about how these things are formed and which one is least likely to have junk in it. It's gonna be the bedrock that was pressed by the lava, where my thumb's at. It's gonna be the sedimentary rock there at the bottom that is under a ton of pressure, and it's sand that's been washed through the water tables of uh, aquifers and underground rivers and oceans. Sandstone can be okay sometimes, but you got to be careful that it doesn't have a lot of uh, other minerals in it that can be harmful to your fish tank. So thanks a lot for joining me. If you have any questions about what rock is great for your fish tank, let me know. I'll answer those for you. Remember, igneous is usually good. That includes glassy rock like obsidian, granite, and quartz. 
uh, sandstone, siltstone, mudstone, limestone. If it ends in stone, there's a good chance that it's probably not the best thing for your tank unless it was literally carved out of a mountainside, deep inside that mountainside and hasn't touched outside bacteria and algae yet. And even then, it tends to grow algae and bacteria, which is a pain. So the other reason we don't want to just pick up rocks anywhere is because of oil spills. So all over in the city anyways, you've got oil spills. You've got, we had forest fires this summer. Terrible forest fires cause acidity in the air and then that rain down on the rocks, it absorbs into any rock that's porous, any sedimentary rock. Metamorphic rock, if it's got banding that's uh, swirly enough and not straight across like the levels in this sandstone and, or not sandstone, my, my pardon me, uh, inside this limestone here that was carved, um, you don't want to use it. So if, if you can see a texture, if you can see little rocks in it, don't use it. It's not good for a fish tank unless you know a lot about that rock. So stay on the safe side, wash your stones, Wa soak them in bleach, 10% or 20% bleach in water, and then let it evaporate, wash it again, scrub it again, and then put it in boiling water. If it's porous, don't put it in boiling water and stand right over it. There's a chance that water could heat up and expand the steam in pockets in the rock and that it could actually uh, shatter or crack. But really that happens under intense heat more so, like fire than boiling but it has been known to happen so be careful so that's how i'm going to break it down for you guys i was going to do three videos but really the best rock is always going to be an igneous rock or a metamorphic rock of an igneous variety or of a variety ironically like chert and jasper that are made up of the shells of the creatures that we keep in our aquarium they lived at the bottom of the oceans and now they're at the top of mountains and they've spent hundreds of millions of years getting there and uh, I just wanted to share this information with you guys and not just cover don't put this rock don't put that rock in and actually get at the science and the geology of why we put which rocks we do in the aquarium so thanks for tuning in i'm sorry this scenery is kind of boring but thanks for bearing with me and i will be back soon with more content keep on swimming guys and uh hit me up if you have any questions or need any advice or you'd like to add something uh tell me what you guys use for your tank i'd love to hear it the ADA stones are beautiful, but they are overpriced, and I know not everyone can afford it. So if you can't afford Dragonstone, you can't afford Mantan or Key or uh, Rayolo, I don't know how to say it even, Ray, Y O U stone, then um, check out what's in your own backyard. I know Kentucky's got a lot. I know uh, the Appalachian, the Rocky Mountains, anywhere that's on the coast, you're going to have stone, you're going to have gravel quarries. Uh, Georgia has it. Florida has a tough time. You guys got a lot of sedimentary rock, but you guys have great conditions for fish. And so a lot of that rock's really clean if you get it out of a river that's already like the blue hole, the blue potholes and things like that. Although you may be introducing uh, foreign uh, bacteria and algae, but it, they're pretty clean. So in any case, let me know what you're working with. If you're stuck and you don't know what to use, message me, drop me a line. I'll try to help you out. And uh, as always, guys, it's Alex, and I'm saying keep on swimming.